Good morning, Cowboy Jim. S stories that are good for the heart. They're true. People don't believe them. No one can believe what the Lord and I have been through. I really believe that my God, the creator of this whole universe, is bored. <laughs> no, really. Think about this now. He has taken time to get to know me. He's taken time to let me get to know him. And he's taken time to let me get to know me. And that's really something. Today, I'm just going to, well, I'm just going to tell you what we're going to do today. If the Lord is kind of leading me in that direction. And that is this. Right now, I'm pretty sure that I have 49 videos that uh, are on YouTube. I want you to know that I could, if the Lord blessed, and I'm telling you, you watch what goes down in these videos. You look for God's blessing, his, what is called his anointing. And that is, like he is always telling me, uh, wing it. And there's a reason for that. That Catholic priest that the Lord told to marry that nun and uh, she listened to and they married uh, so many years ago and I'd happened to pray for him and at a, a friend's place and he, he, he was quite shocked that uh, I had knowledge, which I didn't, uh, of what he was going through and the issues that he was addressing. And I didn't, I didn't have a clue. I'm Irish. <laughs> but that's what God does. When you watch, when you look, look into my eyes, when, when, when I'm running my mouth, you'll see a great deal of my heart. I, I never realized that for years. And I, I started to pay attention to people's attitudes and to their ability to be uh, touched with words and touched by God. And there is a distinct difference between uh, talking about, well, well, let's say the dog and pony show. Uh, if you haven't watched the dog and pony show, well, I'm not really certain that you should, except that I, I, I told that story. It's a true story. It's a good story. Um, but it's a story about a dog and uh, uh, a young stallion and an old stud. The old stud was sitting on the top of the fence rail. That would be me. I'm not really as old as one might imagine. But I am not young. And that was a good story. It was hard to believe, but most everything is hard to believe that the Lord has brought me through. And uh, I, I have three videos that I want, uh, I want to talk about today. And one is Big Larry. I know why my friends... Uh, usually there, there's one, uh, friend that I have at a time who is, um, uh, big, I mean, a blessed giant and, uh, big George Cardinal, 
I mean, if you ever want to see a man work, a man care, <laughs> I'm pretty rough around the edges. Well, Big George doesn't know where the edges are. All he's ever known is, is rough. And, uh, but there's another one, Big Larry, and Big Larry has passed. Big Larry has gone home to be with the Lord. And Big Larry is the giant, uh, six foot five, I think. Uh, I, I always thought he was about 450, maybe 460. And, uh, I don't mean, uh, uh, he is not a small man. And he needed me one time uh, to go to the Calgary Stampede and help him walk through the crowd because he was kind of shy and help him fill out the paperwork to wrestle a bear. And I always wondered what it would be like to be up close and personal with the bear. I had tried many years ago with another big man. His name was Big Adolf. And Big Adolf and I had walked down into a, a low area, somewhat of a valley. And the reason we were walking down there was I saw a bear. And I didn't have bear tags, but I thought, well, I'm not shooting a thing unless it could be considered in self-defense. And so I, I told him, I said, man, I'm walking down there and I'm going to introduce myself to that big black bear. And it was a big black bear. And I said, uh, you can come, but you're not going to believe what's going to happen. And, uh, Big Adolf, not wishing to be looked upon as a pussy, he went with me. And we walked down. I'm not going to tell you how close we got to the bear because I don't want you to think less of me uh, by thinking that I'm, I'm lying. Listen, if you have to lie... If you have to exaggerate, it's the same thing. In order to enhance the appearance of God, well, then you're worshiping the wrong God. And not only that, you're thinking more of yourself than you ought. I am just what I am. Uh, a reflection of my mother, a re a reflection of my God and my environment in which I grew up. My mother taught me how to fight. She taught me how to live. She taught me, though when I was quite young, we didn't talk about God. I didn't know who he was, but I knew he was. I knew he was there. Big Adolf and I, we got real close to that bear. And that bear did not look at us. And it continued ripping uh, stumps apart. And the, the, I mean, it was giving a demonstration of what true power is. And it did not once look at us. I had uh, my uh, 30, uh, 308 Norma Magnum uh, tucked into my shoulder. I had uh, the clip uh, jammed, and I had one up the pike. Or some people say up the pipe. Other people say chambered. I'm telling you, safety off, gun ready, and so close that the only way that we would have survived two, two part God protecting his idiot son. Child, I am a son of God as you 
when you choose to believe in God and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a, a son of God and or a woman uh, of God. I have the highest degree of respect for women, not just any women, but women who had been through some hard times, women that were very much like my mom. We got so close to that bear that big Adolf, he said, Jim, I said, yeah, I didn't, I didn't take my eyes off the bear. I was watching everything because I needed that bear to stand up or just straight charge, straight at us. And it wouldn't have had far to go because I couldn't break the law, but I sure could skirt it a bit. And that's what I was doing. That giant bear, it wouldn't look at us. It wouldn't look away. But listen, children. Uh, bears, uh, grizzlies, I have not had the privilege and the honor of a close encounter with a grizzly. I'm not sure that I want one. I gave my heart away while back I want to live have been times in my life when uh, I wasn't too sure that I wanted to live but if you have purpose my purpose is to honor God honor the memory of my mom to take every opportunity that God can give me to be ready to give reason for my faith in Christ. I don't have to lead everybody to the Lord that I meet. That's stupid. I'm not Billy Graham. <laughs> Even though Big Muncie, uh, another giant, down in the crow's nest, in a coal mine. Boy, I tell you, you work a shift in the coal mine, no one would ever know that you had white hair because you just were covered in black. I believe my lungs were too. Big Adolph decided we're going to get out of Dodge here, and so he said, I'm backing up. I said, well, this bear's not afraid of us, and uh, and this bear's not going to charge. And I mean, I talked to that bear, and I whistled. Well, I tried to whistle. I don't whistle. I work, but I don't. I don't whistle while I'm doing it. And we backed out. Now here, we backed away from that bear for about two, maybe 300 feet. We didn't take our eyes off that bear. We did not take our rifles down from our shoulders. And I tell you, the adrenaline was running pretty good. So I'm sliding over to a, another, another, Friend, I have three videos I want to talk to you about today. One is Big Larry, and he's, as I said, has gone home to be with the Lord. And that was the Big Larry with the wrestling bear. Okay, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but but I'm going to take a shot at it. All right. Oh, uh, yep, there. Now that was a 750 pound bear at the Calgary Sportsman Show. And that young man was pretty heavy, pretty strong. That's me. 
So I'm going to set this aside, or I'm going to try to, and don't go away. So, these three videos, um, Big Larry and the Wrestling Bear, I'd like you to watch that one. I wished I could have explained more about Big Larry. He was a giant, as I said, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, I think. 450 odd pounds and uh, he listened to me he didn't always like me because Big Larry he wasn't used to uh, people not doing what he says I'm not used to doing what anyone says unless it's my employer or my God when my God speaks children I listen there's a reason for that because I've heard him say things that defy logic. What he says, what my father says, does not go contrary to scripture. But you, you better be ready when God speaks, and he will speak. If you give him a chance, he will validate his very existence. Not because he has to, but because he loves you and he wants to. Please, uh, please consider watching Big Larry and the Wrestling Bear. The second video I want you to consider, and it may just, the title, it may not catch your, your eye, but it, it does this, it says this. What does love have to do with it? The next word is the word everything. The reason for that is love has everything to do with everything we do in every way wherein we do it. I've spoken uh, about, especially in this one, about uh, the, the one I call the black-haired warrior. And people don't understand. Well, I, 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 I realize how, how can they understand? Here, I am a uh, uh, seventy-two this month. Um, I haven't been sick in years, literally years. I have broken so many ribs. I take a look at my left shoulder. I've had two major surgeries on my on my shoulder. Um, my elbow, a third of it's going. I've had two major, major surgeries on that. How can you understand what God has brought me through? But this that, that, that I'm doing on these videos, I'm trying not to use the word I very much. I don't like that word. I would rather use my God, my son, the bear, or my friend. Because when this life is done, and uh, children... I'm, I'm not leaving until God calls me home. On two occasions thus far in my life, my God has asked, 
are you ready to come home yet? And I would say, no. Now, well, am I ready? Of course I'm ready. Because when I was a child, I firmly believed that in order to live, you must needs be ready to die. In order to live, you have to live as though it's your last day. But I have dreams, Martin Luther King. I have a dream. My dream is to honor God, to lead as many. Let's 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 word that differently. To be ready to share the reality of Christ with anyone who asks. That's a better way of saying that. Because I, I don't, it's not my obligation to lead people to the Lord. It is my moral obligation, according to scripture, to always be ready to demonstrate what it is for a man to try to live every day honoring God. The second video is what does God what does love same thing God is love what does love have to do with it there are a few things in that video children you will not believe you enter the marriage bed you better be polite to the one that that you love and if you are entering that marriage bed in a flippant sort of manner uh, I wouldn't recommend it because true pure intimacy is the blending of who you are as a man, as, as, as a woman, who are you? What are you? Scripture, know you not that when you join yourself to another, you have become one flesh, but it's more than flesh. Flesh is, uh, uh, flesh is the, the sexual union between two people that very well may be strangers. But that's not the way God intended it. God intended for a man and a woman to love each other with their whole being, mind, soul, heart, spirit, personhood. I met that black-haired warrior woman. I think it took four minutes uh, for me to fall madly in love, head over heels. Absolutely out of mind, stupid, in love. And it was a lot of fun. And I'm still walking in it. So here, Watch this. What does love have to do with it? If you go to bed with a woman, if you're a man, and you go to bed with a, if you're a woman, you go to bed with a man that you're not madly in love with, you're cheating yourself. You're not doing God any favors. You don't have to live your life worrying about honoring God. You do have to live your life realizing that it could be the last day that you live. And so you want to make it count. Children, what does love have to do with it? It has everything to do with it. Everything. Your redemption draweth nigh. I want you to think about that. That's the third video. Right now, 
I'm pretty sure this little um, uh, evaluation of the videos that I have had the privilege and the honor of sitting in front of you, uh, talking with you, uh, trying to get you to look beyond your pain, your hurt, your agony. That's called living. I've had uh, 14 surgeries that have required anesthetic. I've had, uh, you can see this. Well, I try to get this thing. Oh, well, I can hardly do it. My right hand, uh, probably uh, 25 uh, or more uh, fractures. Um, the surgeon cut uh, my finger off uh, one eighth of an inch, might have been a quarter of an inch at a time. Anesthetic, I was really glad of that, froze my hand. But I could not get the sound of those big nail clippers cutting. Uh, that finger down to where there was enough finger that though it was still broken crushed uh, there was something that the tendons could hold on to that would heal and uh, I walked out of that surgery my prescription in hand and uh, said to my ex-wife there have been times when I've been real, real happy that I've been able to, to save my ex-wife. This was one of those occasions. I said, you know, uh, that, that, that hurt. Uh, it hurt my heart. It hurt my spirit. But I couldn't get the sound out of my mind of the, the bone being snipped off. And uh, she said, you're a pussy. And I thought, woman, I'm glad you're my ex-wife. Not just because of brown boy, but because you need a heart. So I took my prescription I think it was for Percocets. And I just uh, kind of folded it up and threw it in the ground as we walked towards the car. And I, I didn't do anything for pain. Freezing came out. I phoned compensation. The surgery was a 20 minute thing in the morning. Fastest doctor I ever, I ever saw work. I didn't watch him uh, cut, cutting my finger off. The sound was enough. I, uh, I phoned compensation. I said, uh, you better get me a psychiatrist because I cannot get the sound of my finger being cut off. And I don't know how many snaps he took, but he, he, he took uh, two, two inches off my finger. A quarter of an inch at a time probably no more and uh, compensation said uh, well we don't uh, we don't uh, hook our uh, people up injured people with psychiatrists very easily I said lady I said I choose to believe in God she said give me 20 minutes I'll hook you up with a psychiatrist well, it turns out it wasn't a psychiatrist, it was a psychologist. And the next day I, I, I went and I sat down with that little lady and uh, she had me tell her about my life. And uh, when I was done, she needed a psychologist because she couldn't believe anything 
the number of things that God had brought me through, unbelievable. She said, uh, you'll you come back tomorrow morning. I said, yes, I will. I did. She said, uh, I, uh, I, I want to know something. She said, how have you survived these many years of being injured, um, of living on the edge, of having pain, of having a doctor say, son, well, you didn't say that to me because people speak to me with a little more respect because, and not because I earned it. Doctor said, you're gonna be a cripple the rest of your life. Your arm will never move. My God had different plans. When we get to that little story, children, uh, I'm telling you, it was good. Psychiatrist said, Jim, what have you done all these years living on the edge? How have you survived? I said, well, I, I talked to God. She said, Jim, I think you better start talking to God real quick. That was the last, uh, I had 10 compensation would pay for 10. That, that little uh, psychologist, she called me several times and said, Jim, you, you can come back for eight more visits. Um, I didn't. I just talked to God. Your redemption draweth nigh. So let's do this quickly. Big Larry and the wrestling bear. What does love have to do with it? Everything. God is love. God gives us the privilege of living, of loving. And there's a very special thing that can happen. It doesn't happen to everyone. I've been married three times. I did not know what being in love was about. I knew what hard work was. I knew, I knew nothing. God's been teaching me. Your redemption draweth nigh, children. Watch these things. This isn't my work. It's my life. But it's my God. And He loves you. He wants you to climb up on his lap in your heart, your soul, your spirit. He wants you to trust him so much that you, as though you were a little kid, because that's what you have living inside you, is that little kid in a body, that little kid does not always know what to do as an adult now. Not always knowing what to do with, with the love. And so we, we sometimes give our love where it's not real love, but we should be holding on to that until a man and a woman look into each other's eyes and they can't find the bottoms of the limitations of the beauty of those eyes. For me, I say, all I saw was eternity when I looked into those eyes that I looked into just this past spring, early spring, I had never seen anything like that. 
my prayer for you is that you will see eternity in the eyes of the one that you love. So here, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said, There is no other name given unto man whereby ye must be saved. John 3, 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting eternal life. I did one uh, about the, the two thieves who were crucified on the cross, one on either side of Jesus, who was innocent. But he, he took my sin. He took yours, if you will, except. And he bore that sin because I couldn't. There was nothing I could do to earn salvation. Nothing that I could do because sin has to have the shedding of blood for atonement, for purging, for cleansing. That's why Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the cross. The one thief who was uh, rightly convicted, right. I, I, I'm not, in that day, he was rightly crucified. And he railed on Jesus. He did everything he could to torment Jesus in Jesus' death. And the other man on the other side of Jesus, he said, don't you realize to the, to the guy who was dying, thief on the other side of Jesus. He said, don't you realize that this man is innocent? This man is innocent. He said, we're not innocent. We earned this right of death. You and I, we have earned the right of death. The atonement for our sin, for the way we've lived our lives, And that man, you have two, two examples of people in the world. One mocks God, makes light of God, does everything in his power to demonstrate his hatred of God, of Jesus. The other, he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your glory. And Jesus turned and looked at him. Knowing full well Jesus was man, but Jesus was God. Knowing full well that right before him, right beside him, either hand was a reflection of mankind. One mocking and one saying, Remember me when you come into your glory. That's what the convicted, crucified thief said. Remember me, Jesus, remember me when you come into your glory. Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. I don't know where paradise is. I know it's not here. But God knows. And so too does that thief who was crucified beside Jesus because that day he died. He went to be with Jesus in paradise. So here, you're going to live till you die. Only you can determine what you and how you and where you will spend eternity. If you have guts, whether you're a woman or a man or a child, if you have enough guts and can honestly say some words, something like this, 
God forgive me. I choose to believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I choose to believe that he took my place on the cross for my sins, that he took my sins upon himself. He took my place. I am sorry, God, for having lived the way that I have. Help me to live the way you would have me to live. Next, if you don't learn to listen to God, to pray, to talk, and realize praying is just talking to God, it's not a, now I lay me down to sleep time. It's not. It's a, a real time where you take your heart, you take your chest, you figuratively open it up and you lay bare your whole personhood. Solomon said to his son, eat, drink, and be merry. Remember, you're going to die. You're going to meet God. Don't children say the strangest things? Yes. They let you know, if you're listening, they let you know that they're being hurt. You have to pay attention. You have to try to live existentially a little bit of their day understand where they're coming from why why do children uh, change from being a happy ha happy little baby girl even a little baby boy to being somewhat withdrawn very sad very apt to to weep to cry you pay attention if there's a question you find out what's going on if you know of someone who is hurting a child you turn that fatherless dog into the RCMP. You protect the child. And the one I'd gladly lay my life down for. Gladly. Lay it down or live it. Gladly. Um, this isn't the black haired woman. I'm not talking about this being the black haired woman. But I'll paint you a picture that I see. And that is a woman sitting on the floor in the corner, knees drawing up, forearms resting on them, forehead resting on those forearms, weeping. Whether in a crowded room or not, crowded room quite often the tears flow down the inside quite often that victim from childhood who has grown into an adult tries to do everything in their power to meet the needs that they truly believe they have when truly the only real need that we have is to be at peace with God. And God made a, a vacuum area in, in our hearts, in our souls, our spirit, our bodies that only He can fill. A specific place. I don't know where it is. Jeez, I, I don't know. But it's in my heart, my soul, my spirit. And as people, we fill that vacuum area with uh, things, drugs, sex, anger, hatred. But that area can only be filled with God and you can only fill it by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So 
so you remember that beautiful woman sitting on her bone in the corner, tears. You remember the little baby girl, two, three, four, whose smile is gone. And she starts to bear the weight of the world upon her little tiny shoulders because some bastard has done what he shouldn't have done. Or she, rare, rare, but it can happen. So, God bless you. God bless you. Look up. God loves you. If in your heart, your soul, your spirit, you are so broken, so ashamed, that you can't look up, you don't have the strength to look up, just say, God, help me. to bring you no shame. It's my prayer. Help me. Give me enough strength that I can lift my head. I can look for you. I can try to be what you want me to be. Remember this. What does love have to do with it? It has everything. I don't know how many years my God is going to give me to live. I'm thinking 10 to 15. I'm hearing longer. I like to hear God say what I, I, I want to hear. I hear you will love. You will be loved. I accept that. I believe that's available to you. You have to learn to love the one you love more than you love yourself. I quite often will say, I don't even like myself. tell you this, I don't love myself, but I know the one that I do love, and I hear my father. I'm not telling you what he says. God bless him. I'm going to reach over, move my little arm that doesn't want to work right today. I mean, it'll work right tomorrow. I'll be back to work tomorrow. Today, if I, my father has a, some of these videos, it's my prayer. They touch your heart. Watch these videos. Big Larry, what does love have to do with it? Everything. Everything. Your redemption draweth nigh. Look up, children. Our God has his hand extended to you. My hand is extended to the one God bless. You.